This is 42 Daily News at 5. It's about time. Brittany Crawford's death led to sweeping changes at county DHR offices. Now control has been taken away from Jefferson County. Find out why. Good evening, I'm Lily Jang. And I'm Mike Motley. Plus, the search for drugs turns into a shootout at this house. Hear what happened. Also, see how local doctors are bringing relief with a new back surgery that makes no incisions in the back. Then Republicans across the state cast a vote for Alabama's upcoming straw poll. Also, Confederate soldiers take a stand in West Blockton today. Then millions of you use them. Now a new type of disposable camera hits the market. It's pros and cons in Consumer Minute. Plus, will we see an end to the rain? Meteorologist Declan Cannon has your forecast. This is 42 Daily News at 5. Thanks for joining us tonight. At this hour, civil rights activists from all across the country are in Birmingham, hearing testimony from local people who claim they're the victims of police brutality. The hearing is being held at St. Joseph's Baptist Church and is sponsored by the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. SCLC President Martin Luther King III says his father fought brutality more than 30 years ago, but the problem still persists today. There are many men and women of police departments who do their job admirably every day. But there's always a fringe element, and it doesn't matter what community you go to in America, that exists, and that is what has to be weeded out. Today's testimony will go into a national report on police brutality. That report will be presented to Congress to rally for more federal standards. What started out as a simple search warrant led to gunfire and death. Last night, Warrior Police came to search the home of 69-year-old Howard Wayne McCannelly, wanted on three outstanding drug warrants. They say McCannelly opened fire, striking Officer Wayne Lloyd, who was wearing a bulletproof vest. McCannelly was injured in the scuffle and was going to be taken to the hospital, but he suffered a heart attack and died in the ambulance. The state will now have control of the Jefferson County DHR Child Welfare Program. Along with other changes announced yesterday, the county supervisor has also been removed over the handling of the Brittany Crawford case. An independent investigator says DHR failed to assess the case accurately. 22-month-old Crawford had been repeatedly abused and died from a blow to the abdomen in March. Her mother and her mother's boyfriend faced charges in her death. All 67 counties in Alabama held GOP conventions today to select delegates and alternates for the state's presidential straw poll. In Jefferson County, thousands cast their ballot at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Vestavia. Delegates from each county will cast unofficial votes for president as a test of the political waters. The state GOP's executive director says today's turnout far exceeded anyone's expectations. It shows that Alabama voters are concerned about the issues facing our country, our families, and our communities. A debate among the Republican candidates will be held here in Birmingham August 27th, one day before the statewide GOP straw poll. A different kind of campaign aims to derail the lottery. Birmingham lawyer and former gubernatorial candidate Lenora Pate has organized a group aimed at rallying Christian women. She met with 30 others in Homewood yesterday. They plan to reach out to women's groups in hopes of defeating the lottery when voters go to the polls in October. The Alabama Supreme Court has ruled the state's antitrust laws do not apply to interstate commerce. They'll now leave it up to the state legislature to expand laws governing business that crosses state borders. Justice has sided with defendants in two separate cases who argued current rules should apply only to businesses carried out inside the state. Well, some are worried about the trend towards combining area schools, saving money but uh, forming larger student bodies. Plans for bigger schools can be found throughout the state. Even President Clinton has addressed the issue, promising help. Trying to keep class size down starts our Alabama Minute. In a radio address last week, President Clinton announced $1.2 billion will be spent on schools nationwide. It is unclear how much of that money Alabama will see. The plan calls for money to be used to hire 30,000 teachers for the coming school year. Clinton also urged Congress to do their part in trying to keep class size down and modernizing schools. Wednesday morning, legislators and lobbyists will present their side of the Sunday liquor sales flap to the public. A special committee is investigating how a word got changed in a bill that would have allowed liquor sales on Sunday. Lawmakers unknowingly passed the provision last month. It was vetoed by Governor Siegelman. The Lurleen Wallace Development Center for the Mentally Ill in Decatur is facing an uncertain future. The managing agency for the mental home will release a report this week either recommending it to be shut down or reduced in size due to money woes. Two escapees from the Walker County Detention Center have been caught in Montgomery. Police say Daniel Macon and Johnny Halford 
were stopped by tire spikes along I-65 yesterday. They were driving a car stolen from the detention center. Each is charged with receiving stolen property, and both are behind bars under $15,000 bond. Now, meteorologist Declan Cannon with your 24-hour forecast. Well, the soggy weekend continues to unfold. Tonight, we'll see temperatures fall into the low 70s. Another muggy night on tap, no doubt about it. Showers and thunderstorms, especially early this evening. And then tomorrow, a chance that we could see a little bit of sunshine and the highs climbing into the mid to upper 80s with some of these heavier thunderstorms. We could, at times anyway, see some local flooding. Winds out of the south or southwest and picking up a bit at 10 to 15 miles per hour by tomorrow afternoon. Well, it's been a real soggy weekend, no doubt about it. Quite a comparison to last weekend's delightful weather for city stages. You can see on the radar that there is quite a large area of rain pushing across central Alabama. But I tell you, the folks down on the Gulf Coast today, they've been getting pounded. Had a great call today from Dr. James Price out in Pinson, and uh, he was telling me that uh, last year up to this date, 33 days with a highs of 90 or higher, only eight days so far this year where we've had highs of 90 degrees or higher. So again, quite a difference between this summer and last summer. Coming up, a complete look at your long-range forecast. U.S. Marines have rounded up several suspected looters after more Serb property was destroyed in Kosovo. Many of the suspects are KLA members. Reports say they entered a village in southeast Kosovo and set fire to Serb houses. Then Albanians in the village looted property belonging to their for former Serb neighbors. One man was forced to return the things he had stolen. The attack comes two days after Marines shot and killed two Serb shot two Serbs in the village. In national news, American Airlines is looking into two terrifying landings. Yesterday, one of its jets blew out eight tires while landing at Tulsa International Airport. It closed down the main runway at the airport, causing flight delays. Seven airline employees were on board the Airbus 300 when its main gears locked up while braking. No passengers were on board and no one was hurt. 130 passengers and crew members made it through a safe emergency landing in California. The American Airlines jet headed for San Diego touched down at Miramar Air Station yesterday. The pilot reported that something might have fallen off the MD-80. Airport workers combed the closed runway for about an hour before reopening the airport for traffic. Sexual misconduct on campus isn't a widespread problem. That's what the head of the Virginia Military Institute is saying tonight. This in response to the dismissal of BMI's top cadet for allegedly demanding sex from female cadets. Jerry Webb II was expelled last month for making the improper remarks to three female freshmen. All three women are expected to be back in the fall. Webb is unlikely to appeal his dismissal. A federal judge has ordered independent counsel Kenneth Starr to give Maryland prosecutors tape recordings made by Linda Tripp. She's under investigation for allegedly breaking state wiretap laws by recording conversations with former White House intern Monica Lewinsky without her permission. Scientists have released the first images from Gemini North, one of the world's largest infrared telescopes. Positioned high on top of Hawaii's Mauna Kea Mountain, the telescope is designed to give astronomers a view as clear as a space-based telescope would. Take a look. This remarkable first look is a star nearing the end of its life cycle. The images will provide astronomers with information about how stars recycle material back into space as they die. Well, it's a test, but more than just a test. Across the country, some real hams are testing their ability to communicate. Up next on 42 Daily News, we'll take it to Tuscaloosa, where ham radio enthusiasts are putting their skills to the test. Then, gray skies didn't keep these folks from enjoying a chance to catch catfish. We'll tell you how it's helping people with disabilities. Plus, in Medical Minute, see how a breakthrough back surgery is helping thousands with chronic pain. Hi, Sputnik Pizza. That's my pizza? Yeah, and it's fresh. Fresh? Fabricated fresh. Fabricated? Fabricated fresh, then freeze-dried. It's so fresh, it's from the future. One oven fresh pizza? Domino's makes it fresh when you call. And delivers it hot in the Domino's heat wave. Domino's, made fresh, arrives fresh. Here's a fresh deal. Two one-topping mediums for just $10.99. The new Domino's, you gotta taste it to believe it.
Something great's going on at your Ford dealer. Backed by popular demand, the second annual Big Time Tin Event. Get 0.9 financing for 36 months on Ford Explorer, America's best-selling sport utility. That's right, just 0.9%. Choose from over 80,000 Ford cars and trucks and get big savings on the big expedition. Hurry to the second annual Big Time Tin Event at Adamson, Long Lewis, Ernest McCarty, or Jim Skinner Ford today. Ah, uh, spas, spas, only at Superior Hot Tubs and Saunas. You have just four days to catch the manufacturer's sale. Four days only with 12 months no interest or save cash when you purchase with cash. Over 100 different models to choose from. Save thousands, guaranteed best prices, best quality. Free covers, free ozone, free chemical, free delivery and set up within 50 miles, same day. Buy today, be in your spa tonight. Come early for best selection. Superior Hot Tubs and Saunas, where you always get superior selection and service. Superior Hot Tubs and Saunas. Many Birmingham residents enjoy the day's few moments of sunshine out at Kelly Ingram Park. Family Day brought people together to provide a sense of community and energize neighbors. Speakers like City Councilman and Mayoral Hopeful William Bell and Governor Don Siegelman called on neighbors to improve Birmingham one block at a time. This is a, a perfect example of how neighborhoods and people can come together to make their communities better and make the state better. Governor Siegelman also took the opportunity to muster support for his lottery proposal. It's one of the oldest forms of broadcast communications, but fans of ham radio say it still plays a vital role in times of emergency. This weekend, amateur radio frequencies are filled with folks trying to see who they can reach throughout the continent. Uh, we are for Alpha Ontario, for Alpha Ontario. That's Ontario, Canada, and it's a good start for these amateur radio buffs taking part in a one-day ham fest. The goal? See how many other hams across North America they can reach during a 24-hour period. Ham radio communication comes in handy during emergencies, like earthquakes, floods, and tornadoes. There's a lot of times when the power's down, the phones are out, and uh, nothing else can get through, ham radio can get through. Some 40 people in Cottondale will take shifts and record who they reached, where, and time of day. Many of these folks also double as storm spotters for the Weather Bureau, which sends them out during periods of bad weather. I actually feel I'm more safer doing that than I am if I'm just at home not knowing what's going on. Uh, if I'm actually out spotting, I know that the Weather Service is not going to put me in front of a tornado. They want to get me off to the side or behind it so I can report what's happening. The hams will stay on the air until 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but their schedule could change if nasty weather moves in and they have to help out. 7.23... Well, tonight, 15 people remain in the race to win this $10,000 pontoon boat. To win, you have to keep your hand on the boat longer than anyone else. That's no easy feat and rough on your feet. Contestants get a five-minute break every hour and a 15-minute rest period every six hours. Already nine people have dropped out since it started yesterday. We will keep you posted. Well, for the third, time, for the third uh, year in a row, uh, some of Birmingham's outdoor enthusiasts broke out their rods and wheels, wheelchairs that is. The annual catfish roundup at East Lake Park was held today. A good catch for a good cause starts our neighborhood minute. The Wheeling Sportsmen of America provided rods and reels, baited hooks, trophies, and lunch for all who participated. The event is designed for people of all disabilities. UAB volunteers were on hand to give a hand, baiting hooks, catching fish, and handing out trophies. History came alive on the streets of West Blockton today. The annual Wild West Blockton shootout was had between Union soldiers and Blockton deputies. The deputies successfully defended their streets, setting up for this afternoon's civil reenactment. Volunteers get together every year to promote their town during the wartime festivities. Today was the last day for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship meeting at the BJCC. The 4,000 members have been making plans for their 100-plus missionary volunteers. The group focused on how to best mobilize and work with families to help promote their beliefs. And coming up in Medical Minute, a back surgery that's showing great results. You'll hear from local doctors. That's in two and a half minutes right after your weather. Now, meteorologist Declan Cannon with your long-range forecast. Well, quite a difference, as I mentioned before, when you compare this weekend to last weekend's delightful weather. We're stuck in a real soggy mode. Now, tomorrow, not as many thunderstorms. There's still going to be a few out there. 87, a little higher than today's 85. Even warmer on Monday, and we'll talk about this trend towards warmer and somewhat drier in a moment. 
But for tonight, it's a soggy night indeed. In fact, we have lots of moisture in the atmosphere from ground level all the way up to about 20,000 feet above the ground level. So it's a real thick layer of moisture. The storms that are forming in this kind of uh, environment have an easy time producing locally heavy rain. In fact, very high rainfall rates are possible, an inch, maybe an inch and a half in one hour's time. And we could at times get uh, some localized flooding, pretty much the same story that we've been through over the past 24 hours. Now, when we go back 24 hours and look at the radar across Mississippi, Alabama, and farther west, you can see tremendous thunderstorms pounding the Gulf Coast. Uh, we've had reports today of several inches of rain and gusty winds. Uh, the heaviest uh, part of this line just now pushing off the coast just southeast of Dolphin Island. want to show you the water vapor imagery because very important here. If you look to the west of us, this curved part of the uh, water vapor in the atmosphere, that actually indicates the beginning of the drying trend. This is what I think will be moving over us tomorrow. So we don't have as many storms in the forecast tomorrow. But still, the ones that do occur could be quite heavy, producing some locally heavy rainfall. So that's for tomorrow. That's for Sunday. As we go into Monday, again, a little bit more sunshine expected. We'll have higher daytime temperatures, probably climbing into the upper 80s. It's still going to be very humid. And so it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable. In fact, uh, for Tuesday, I'll just go ahead and call it a literal steam bath. There will be a front approaching us from the north, slowly sagging to the south. But unfortunately, I don't think uh, this front with its drier air behind it is going to get into Alabama. Just a glancing blow. There may be a, a shower or a thunderstorm with that front as we get into Wednesday, but that's about it. Thursday, the front starts to hightail it back to the north where uh, these fronts tend to hang out this time of the year in summer. And we'll just be left with a chance for some scattered uh, showers, thunderstorms as we get into Thursday. So again, tonight, locally heavy rain is possible with some flooding, less thunderstorm activity tomorrow. And then as we get into the new week, it looks like more showers and thunderstorms are expected, although the chances will be a lot less. And those daytime highs are going to get uh, between 85 and 90 degrees. Well, more than 12 million people, young and old, suffer from back pain. It's also the leading cause of workers' comp expenses. While surgery may seem like the last resort, a relatively new procedure is spelling relief. Interbody Fusion is our medical minute. For the first time today, a back surgery was performed on the Internet for an online audience. But local doctors have been at it for the past two years. What makes it such a breakthrough? Well, instead of making an incision in the back and working around the sensitive spinal cord, doctors go in from the abdomen. Quite frankly, to get to the back from the front, they've got to move a lot of things out of the way. Birmingham doctor Rex Scherer is a vascular surgeon who teams up with Carter Morris, a neurosurgeon. Dr. Scherer carefully moves vital organs and blood vessels out of the way for Dr. Morris to do his work. Morris places titanium cages filled with bone between the vertebrae where the cushioning has worn down. The bones will later fuse together. Dr. Morris says the combination of the abdomen incision and special fusing method is showing great results. This new technique that we have is the easiest way that we've ever had to deal with this problem and also the most successful in dealing with the problem. And the surgery takes anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours, and the recovery time is also shorter than more traditional bone fusing surgeries. The cost? Between $25,000 and $40,000, and good news, it is covered by most insurance companies. Hundreds of athletes are flocking to Birmingham to show their strength. Learn how one man's efforts are making that happen. Also on 42 Daily News, find out why the Golden Bear is stepping out of the Senior PGA Championships in tonight's Two Minute Drill. Sarah Toyota is even hotter. We're taking $3,000 off every vehicle in stock. Call us today for your quick price quote by phone. Guaranteed in three minutes. Get the best price on the automobile you want in three short minutes. You can drive a brand new Sarah Toyota Sienna for only $2.69 a month. Call Sarah Toyota at 1-800-NEW-TOYOTA. Toyota is hot, hot. When you see breaking news, call the 42 Daily News hotline at 322-4665 or make a free call by dialing star 42 on your Bell South mobility phone. Eat all you want and lose weight. Claims like these are often just too good to be true. They can not only waste time and money, but affect your health as well. Before you start a weight loss program, talk to your doctor and do your homework. Call for this free brochure. This is one weight loss plan you can believe in. 
The tests are still up, but not for long. These are the final days of your Ford dealer's second annual Big Time Ten event. The last chance to cash in on cash back and low financing during this special time of year. Get 0.9 financing for 36 months on Ford Explorer. That's right, just 0.9%. Or get big savings on the big expedition. Hurry in for the final days of the second annual Big Time Ten event at your local Ford dealer. When the canvas drops, these great offers are history. Beginning in just a few minutes, hundreds of wrestlers from around the country will take their stand on the mat right here in Birmingham. This means a lot to Vestavia Hills High School wrestling coach Steve Gaydosh. It's through his tireless efforts that the National Open High School Wrestling Championships are being held at the BJCC this weekend. More than 800 wrestlers will participate. Now, Beth on a Bato and the two-minute drill. When it comes to using golf carts in tournaments, Jack Nicklaus has been vocally against it. So when the Golden Bear used a cart yesterday, you knew there was something seriously wrong. Well, his aching hip has caused Jack Nicklaus to withdraw from the Senior Players Championship in Dearborn, Michigan. Hale Irwin is in the lead today, taking over from Graham Marsh. Irwin is 14 under par after two days of play. And Boris Becker, who came to Wimbledon unseated, continued his winning ways today with a center court victory over Leighton Hewitt in three sets. And Andre Agassi advances the next round with a victory over Alberto Martin. Agassi's trying to become the first man since Bjorn Borg to win Wimbledon and the French Open in the same year. Well, a miracle occurred in New York's Madison Square Garden last night. Now, it wasn't the fact that San Antonio Spurs became the NBA champs after 26 years of waiting. No, the miracle on 34th Street was the Knicks fans actually cheered at the end of the game. David Robinson gets his first ring. He and his teammates have given the state of Texas its second championship in a week as the Dallas Stars won the Stanley Cup. Well, both the Bush and Winston Cup races will be held tomorrow at the Lysol 200 at Watkins Glen. Ron Fellows sits the pole, followed by Randy LaJoy, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jack Baldwin, and Matt Kenseth. And at the Save Mart 350 in Sonoma, California, Jeff Gordon appears to be making his move. He went ahead of Tony Stewart in the points race last night. Last week, he sits the pole. This week, Stewart is second. Jerry Nadeau, then Rusty Wallace, and Jimmy Spencer. Well, let's go to the National League for our play of the day. The Cardinals in Phoenix. Jose Jimenez on the mound, pitching against Diamondbacks ace Randy Johnson. In the bottom of the ninth, Jimenez has a no-hitter going. Jimenez the pitch, ground ball to second, the throw to first. And Cardinal rookie Jose Jimenez has the first St. Louis no-hitter in 16 years. He's the first Cardinal rookie to pitch one since 1934, and it's the first no-hitter of the 1999 season. And that's sports. We'll see you at 10. Those disposable cameras are a convenient and easy way to point and click, but as always, someone's found a way to improve them. Up next on 42 Daily News, the lowdown on a new disposable with instant results in Consumer Minute. To make my family happy, just add water. But between swim lessons, locker rooms, and wet sneakers, it's no wonder they get those painful planner wards. So I'm glad Compound W One Step has a new planner ward remover that's waterproof. Its One Step design seals water out and keeps the medication in. And it's cushioned to make walking more comfortable. Until they make waterproof kids, I'll use Compound W One Step for planner wards. It's new, it's waterproof, it works. It's not clinically proven. It's not Guantera. Disposable cameras make photo taking convenient and easy. Now there's a new development in disposables that offers instant gratification. Shedding new light on disposable cameras is our consumer name. Smile, Mark. Smile. This is the new Pop Shot camera from Polaroid. This disposable gives you instant pictures. It's your face. These folks got the chance to try it out at the zoo in Omaha, Nebraska. One, two, three, G. The camera is supposed to work inside and out. I like it. The colors are good. The clarity is pretty nice. Takes a good picture. Take a look for yourself. The pictures turned out pretty good. Now the camera was tried inside with lots of light. And again, the picture came out clear. So now it's time for the ultimate test in a totally dark hallway. Three. Later, look at the picture. But it was dark when we took this one. Yeah, and you can see their faces. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed. How about you? Yeah, I am. The only real drawback was the picture size. They're all this little. 
not the reg not a size not of a regular a picture. No. Yeah. Another drawback for some would be the cost. A little pricey. Pop shots run about eighteen dollars, but there are only ten pictures. That's about a dollar eighty per shot. Another thing about the pop shot camera is instead of throwing it away, it comes with a postage paid envelope. You send it back to Polaroid and then they recycle it. Recapping tonight's top story, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference held a hearing in Birmingham on police brutality. The goal was to compile a national report to rally Congress for federal standards of police conduct. At today's hearing, residents testified to witnessing or experiencing police misconduct. Will the sun make an appearance anytime soon? Your Workweek forecast is next. Plus, if you said these people are real yo-yos, they wouldn't be insulted. See some world champs in tonight's picture of the day. The Lincoln Commitment. A commitment to demonstrate that at Lincoln, luxury is more than a superior vehicle. It's 24-hour roadside assistance, computerized mapping, a total ownership experience that has moved Lincoln ahead. Take the roomy, comfortable Lincoln Town Car. Now with over $4,800 in APR savings. But hurry, the Lincoln Commitment may be forever, but this offer isn't. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. I'm Maureen O'Boyle on the next Extra. This is what you do behind closed doors. This is what you use to spice up what you do behind closed doors. But peddle these playful products and you could end up behind these doors. Policing the bedroom. Then, weighing 283 at age 11, Angie had little hope of shedding the pounds until the whole town stepped in to help. Extra's there as this courageous girl begins the battle of her life. Next Extra. Extra, Monday at noon on CBS 42. This weekend on ER. I want my job back. A commitment to duty. All right, what do we got? Nobody's drawn this woman's blood without her permission. A responsibility. What did you do? I stood up for my patient's civil liberties. That defies authority. Didn't we relay you off? I'm not accepting it. Sometimes you have to take a stand against the odds. Jeannie, don't humiliate yourself by being forcibly removed from the premises. You do what you need to do, Carrie. I'll do what I need to do. ER. Tonight at 6 on CBS 42. In the People's Court, he rules. Yeah, oh, what, she what you said? I'm tired of Slap, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Say it. <laughs> Weekdays at 3 on CBS 42. Yo-Yo Madness is tonight's picture of the day. Take a look. These kids are the masters of a yo-yo universe, part of a group called High Performance, the World Yo-Yo Champs. They travel the world mentoring young and old on the finer points of yo-yoing. But it takes a little talent, don't you think? They're in New York City this weekend. The champs practice almost two hours a day to keep sharp. You could say they have the world on a string. We're coming up tonight on 42 Daily News at 10. More on today's police brutality hearing and Find out how a parent's smoking habit can affect your child's behavior for a lifetime. Plus, in Consumer Minute, hear how you'll soon be able to download postage stamps from the Internet. And also, a premature millennium celebration straight from the skies. It's all new just for you tonight at 10. Now, meteorologist Declan Cannon with your Workweek forecast. Well, the general theme coming up this work week will be to dry it out just a little bit. There's a chance for a shower or a thunderstorm each day, and you'll notice the high starting to climb a little bit closer to 90 degrees on Monday and Tuesday, and it's going to stay quite muggy, typical summer weather. Two to three inches of rain possible in northern and eastern Alabama during the next four to five days, and as you look at your regional radar, you can see showers and thunderstorms are quite evident all across the southeast this evening. Let's take a look at a Super Doppler here, 42 Super Doppler. Some heavier rain just now crossing into the western parts of Jefferson County. If you have some outdoor plans this evening in the Birmingham metro area, this batch of rain will be moving through. It is quite heavy and it'll probably last 15 to at least 45 minutes. And that is our news for this half hour. The CBS Evening News is next. Enjoy your weekend. Stay dry. We'll see you back here at 10.